What are the psychological effects of some occult items, operations, performances and rites? We cannot eliminate the biopsychological or psychological effects and all the cognitive biases when we engage in magic. It is a subtle art, yet it is transposing direct subjective experiences upon our minds, souls and hearts. For instance, if a sensitive, medium, unstable, weak person will receive a potent amulet of Mars, of Ares, and an intelligencer of Mars or a soul or a spirit associated with this sphere of influence will start putting pressure on the mind of such a person he might turn choleric, unstable, raging, shouting and so on. So it is always about the ready framework that someone has within his mind. Whether he has Mars Saturn traits, Venusian lovely, Mercurial, Jupiterian kingly and nobly or Saturnian more sagely and strict and disciplined. Every form of magic will pull out only the potential that you have and actualize it in a very complex fashion of coordinates, values and attributes that it may emancipate out of you. That is why Gnoti Seauton, as it was written at the Delphic Oracles, that you need to know yourself, thyself, first, in order to know where certain operations, ceremonies, rites, amulets, talismans, Elixirs, al -ixir, the Arabic word, will lead you towards. And if you want to consciously support your development, whether it be personality development, psychological development, your mental skills, your mental apparatus, your cognitive emotional standing, your magical skills, your trafficking with the spirits, with the divinities, then you need to know when and where you're heading. You need to know your composition your arrangement to play the symphony out. And it is a very complex, ta complex task. You cannot take only one aspect of your personality out of thousands of others. You cannot take one aspect of the astral or the magical world or the divine world in the sacred chaos and order and expect that it will work the way you want it to. So it is all about experiments, trials, feedbacks and understanding yourself primarily because you can point towards the universe and the stars asking yourself questions about the nature of things, about the truths, whence, to, where from. But at the very end the finger pointing at the moon point backs to you and you have to ask yourself a question what constitutes you as a mortal, as a human being and all its humaneness, vice and virtue. And remember that every form of magic, if you're a potent magician or if you're a sensitive or a medium, will have direct consequence on your mental field, your soul field, spiritual field, your feelings, emotions, hearts, everything you connect to. And it will deform you to an utter degree or ennoble you to a great standing of excellence. Nobody can reach excellence or perfection, but aspiring to such a standing means rounding yourself as you are. So if you have a choleric nature, it is to sublimate your anger and your wrath into great compassion, for example, fierce compassion. If it's a passionate, lusty nature, Venusian, lovely, then you transpose it and sublime it into great erotica, into command over your sexuality, into something lovely, and fiercely loving. If it is a Jupiterian nature, Jupiter has twin sides too, those Melichios, the underground Zeus. You need to refine the fallen kingdom, the fallen qualities of a king or a leader into something strong, into something noble, into something worthy of arete, virtue, alke, the armor of the divine. And that is so in every step and stage. 
Avrisva has a fallen nature and a greater nature. Think about octaves, about hells and heavens, perhaps, if we pick this dichotomy of uh, such stratifications of this world. And it is the goal of the philosopher, of a humane human being, to refine those things that were checked and verified to have great and benevolent consequence in the end, not only for yourself, but for the rest incorporating them within yourself and operating on your own standards, spine and qualities and not demanding it of anyone else. If they will be inspired by you, all the best. But you cannot force others to walk their path and realize. They must realize themselves, they must use reason, they may use reason. And if you inspire them enough for them to realize on their own what is of greatest value, then that's a win-win. Because they will inspire more. That is so. Thank you.